There's a hidden masking tool in Photoshop that could transform how you edit your photos, but you're probably not using it yet. This masking tool isn't created with any selection tool or brush adjustment, but is instead created with the help of our neural filters and two simple checkboxes. So with your image opened in Photoshop, of course, we're going to go up to filter and then down here to neural filters to begin. Inside of the neural filter window, we want to go to the depth blur option and enable this. We can forget about all the settings here. They don't matter. The only two settings that we do need to look at is the focus subject and then output depth map only. Clicking on those two things will give us a preview like this. And here we're essentially looking at a layer mask that will have different intensities based on the depth of our image. I'll explain this more in just a minute, but for now, let's go and save this as a new layer. So we'll set the output here to new layer and then click OK. Back in the main Photoshop area, you can see that we've created a new layer with that depth map preview, but we can't really do anything with this by default. We can't apply this to a layer mask because it's just an image at this point, but we can go and select the contrast of that image by using our channels panel. So going into the channels panel, we can click on that right here, or if you don't see it, just go up to window and down here to channels to reveal it. But what we want to do is select all of the visible areas on this layer. To do that, just hold command or control and click on the RGB layer thumbnail here. So clicking on this RGB thumbnail, while holding command or control, this will select all of the visible areas on this channel. Therefore, anything that is white will be more selected than anything that is gray, while anything that is black will be 100% invisible. The operation is exactly like a layer mask where white is fully visible and black is fully transparent. Varying shades of gray in between give you different levels of visibility between 100% and 0%. This will make a little more sense once we apply our adjustment here. But with our selection made, we can go back to our layers panel and then we can apply an adjustment. So let's say I add a curves adjustment here. I'll disable the underlying depth map because I don't want to see that. I want to see the photo now. And you can see that we have an exact copy of the depth map, but now as a layer mask on the adjustment layer here. So if I were to go and make an adjustment like so, you can see that I am editing more of the background. I'll go really dramatic here so it's very clear. I'm editing more of the background and less of the subject because on the layer mask here, Photoshop is being told that anything close to the camera, which is the subject and also so the dark area of the layer mask is going to be less edited by this adjustment compared to the lighter gray and white areas in the background, which will have more effect from this adjustment. Now, the beauty of these depth maps is that we can go and add really blended contrast or color into our photos without having to create selections. And sometimes with selections, they can give you hard edges that don't look very good. So to give you an example of the alternative of this, if we wanted to only darken the background, for example, I'm just going to go and click on my background layer and then choose select subject. With a selection of the subject here, now we could go and repeat the same process of creating a new adjustment layer. I'll click on the topmost layer and the layer stack and then create another curves adjustment layer. This will apply that selection right onto the layer mask, but I want to select the background. So I'll press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask and therefore our subject won't be edited. But now if I go and apply a similar contrast adjustment, disabling the depth map option, I'll just go and make this quite a bit darker like so. This of course works, but there's a very clear hard edge between where the adjustment is applied and not applied. If we compare this to the depth map, it's a lot more blended and seamless. So we get this really nice transition throughout our image. So all of our contrast exposure and color adjustments just look way more blended because again, we're not having a hard stop of yes or no, this is being affected. We're having a gradual adjustment based on the foreground, midground, and background of our photo that we can easily control with our layer mask. Now, just to give you a counter option of this, if I wanted to edit the subject more than the background, then of course we could invert this layer mask. So clicking on that mask, I'll press command or control I to invert it. And now when I make this adjustment, the subject is going to have the majority of this effect applied while the background, especially the far away background, will basically have no adjustment from this current layer. 
Again, that is because we inverted the depth map, so now we're targeting more of the foreground rather than the background. Now, I have one more really useful example for you coming up in just a second, but before we get there, if you find anything related to layers and all of these settings super overwhelming in Photoshop, then I invite you to download my free Photoshop Pro ebook down in the description below. It'll get you up and running with the six most important areas of Photoshop to master, so that way you can start working on your projects with confidence. Again, it's totally free in the description below, but let's move on to example two, where we talk about the same idea, but this time with colors. Here in example two, I've already gone ahead and repeated the same steps that we did before of going up to filter and then down to neural filter, selecting the depth map and focus on subject option, and then outputting to a new layer. That is what gave me this result here, but because we don't have a clear subject standing in the middle of the photo, the look of this depth map is quite a bit different. We have a very clear foreground, a midground, and then the background with the sky and the castle and things. So in the case of a landscape image, perhaps you want to add some more targeted contrast to the foreground, but you don't want that at all to affect the background. Or perhaps you also want to edit some of the colors in the background, but not the foreground. Well, we can just use this one depth map over and over again in a couple different ways to make that happen but this time using some extra steps that we didn't cover in the first example. Just like before, we'll wanna make sure our depth map layer is enabled, and then we'll go to the channels panel, hold command or control and click on the RGB thumbnail to create a selection of all the visible pixels on this layer. Now we can go back to the layers panel, add an adjustment of choice. Let's start with the curves, and that will apply that depth mask onto this layer mask for our adjustments to be applied. I'll disable the depth map layer so that I can see the image and my adjustment will be visible as I go and make these edits. But let's say here that I want to go and darken more of the foreground. So I'll bring the midtones down like so, just as an example to start with, and I don't like how it is affecting so much of the background. So that means I'll invert this depth map. So clicking on the mask, I'll press Command or Control I. Therefore, I'll now target more of the foreground, less of the background. But if the background was still being affected too much, we can increase the contrast of this layer mask by clicking on it and pressing Command or Control L. This brings up our levels adjustment and we can edit the black point over here as well as the white point to basically make our adjustments more or less intense in different areas. If I look at the layer mask here, when I make the black point adjustment, you can see by default there's a bit of the castle in view. But then as I go and bring this point in, the castle becomes fully black, therefore it will be unaffected by the adjustment, and the adjustment becomes more and more isolated to the foreground. I'll make this a little bit more clear by viewing the layer mask. I'll just press cancel, hold alt or option, click on the layer mask to view it, and I'll repeat this process once again. Pressing Command or Control L while the layer mask is selected, you can see how increasing the black point will remove more of the background from view. But if I went the opposite way, from the highlights point, I could bring more of that mid-ground area of the photo into the targeted area for this adjustment. So that way you can really refine the result. So I want to target more of the foreground, so I'm going to bring up the shadows here. Now the mid-ground and background of the sky are completely eliminated from this mask. I'll click OK. And to exit this view, I'll just hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask. Now when I make this adjustment here, it can be isolated just to the lower area of the image kind of giving us a unique effect that is like a gradient adjustment, but a little bit more customized based on the depth of the image. So turning this on and off, now we have just an isolated adjustment to the foreground. Now let's say we want to go and refine some of the colors, but only in the background. I'll go ahead and begin by creating a new hue saturation adjustment layer with no particular layer mask. And I want to go and edit the blues. So I'll click on the blue color here. And obviously, if I change the hue, it'll change the hue of all the blues in the image. But I don't want this to affect the foreground as much. So let's go and use our depth map to fix this. First, enabling the visibility of the depth map layer, going to the channels panel, holding the command or control key, clicking on the RGB thumbnail to create a selection, going back to the layers panel, clicking on the hue saturation adjustment layer mask, and then we want to fill our current selection with black because our layer mask is currently white, so we want to fill with the opposite color. The easiest way to do that is just going to our contextual taskbar, clicking on the fill icon and going to black as the fill option. 
and now our selection has been applied onto this mask. I'll press Command or Control D to deselect it, and then disable the depth map layer. Of course, we want to select the background and less of the foreground, so we want that background area to be white on this mask. So to fix this, just press Command or Control I to invert that mask. But if, like before, you want to have more of a clear separation, I'll hold Alt or Option to view that layer mask just by clicking on it there. And then I can press Command or Control L to access my levels to apply some contrast directly onto that mask. And I want to increase the shadows here, so I'm affecting less and less of the foreground. Remember, anything that is white or gray will be affected. Anything that is black will be not affected by our adjustment, which means what we're looking at here is a selection of the midground and background of the photo. I'll click OK, hold Alt or Option, and click on the mask to exit that view. And now when I go and make these hue adjustments, I can add them specifically to the sky and less so of the foreground. So that way I don't have to deal with any complicated masking. I could really increase the saturation or desaturate the sky separately from the rest of the photo. This can be useful for creative editing, but also if you want to have variations in color without having to create all these complex selections between your midground, your background, and things like that. So just turning that on and off, you can see how the adjustment is limited to the background of the image. Turning these two adjustments on and off together, you can see that we've just had a lot more control over where our effects are applied. And this would be very difficult to replicate with just a typical brush or gradients or things like that on your masks because we have so much variation between the grays, whites, and blacks on our mask to create a really nice blended adjustment with all of our effects. Now, I'd be curious to know what you think of this masking feature down in the comments below. Do you think that you're going to use this feature in your photo editing or do you think it's not really that useful for you? I think it's a really neat feature that I have gotten a bit of use out of and it's definitely something that is way more hidden away than it should be in Photoshop. But anyways, I hope that you learned something here and can apply it in your next project. And with that, I'll see you next time.